Warlords Ruin Solo Flawless Guide just knocked my run out yesterday and I kind of wanted to break it down what builds I used in each encounter to make it easy for you. I was running on a Titan and man, I was struggling at the boss. I kept dying at the boss. I didn't want to run Strand, but I decided to go back to the roots, switch to the Hunter, and it made it pretty simple. So when you first start in, I like to launch in with Strand, always have that grapple because obviously you're trying to head to the first boss. And after jumping on the rocks, there's that bridge. You can just Strand grapple across, throw a melee and pretty much run to the first encounter hunter is pretty tough on the first boss i tried tether with lament i tried golden gun i tried shards of gallon or blade barrage i really feel like using assassin's cowl throughout this dungeon is really going to help you so what i did was is i ran assassin's cowl in the beginning because i wanted to build up that combination blow for my one two punch shotgun while they add spawn try and build up your combination blow two times two or if you can times three it that's fine get stuck in the cage, shoot yourself out, and then try and melee and proc that combination blow while standing in the orbs to get to damage. Try and get two, but if you only get one, it's okay. It's probably gonna be a slow phase here because you're trying to get that solo flawless and take your time. As soon as damage starts, I always switched while I was invis to Liar's Handshake. Have that combination blow, throw your super, tractor shotgun melee melee rock that liar's handshake also when you're punching him you're going to be healing so that's why it's kind of nice it stomps where the ads are shooting you every time you punch him you're going to proc that heal so remember it's okay if you have combination blow times three and you only step in one pool instead of two you're still going to do decent damage rinse and repeat maybe step in a pool not damage the boss because you got some ads up go ahead and get your super back if you're running these mods like dynamo hands on you're gonna get your super back pretty quickly i'm gonna put the mods on screen here on the build also what i'm using in my artifact and also in the subclass switch it up use whatever you like you don't have to run this build but i just wanted to show you a simple thing that i use when you're headed to the next boss you can simply throw on strand again throw on some stompies throw on a eager edge sword to get that distance and i just skip the whole bridge once i get up to the bridge i kind of just jump to the right when i made it to the end i hit my grapple went to that sewer and started heading to the ogre be careful in that spike room though those spikes are annoying when you get to the ogre encounter i tried multiple builds i don't really feel like there's a wrong one to run but it's really important that you really spec into the solar subclass like i used here these fragments that i'm going to go over on the screen here we'll hover over each one are simply to keep your restoration up at all times not only will your healing nade proc restoration and solar kills reproc you can use solar weapons or solar abilities to proc that empyrean but also you're going to be making fire sprites with your melee and you're probably like well clyde if you make a fire sprite and you pick it up it resets your restoration i only picked up restoration to keep my healing nade so if i made a fire sprite with a powerful melee i pick up a fire sprite i kill an ad right away and i'd have that restoration proc at all times because i wanted to save my healing nade for when i really needed it if i almost got killed or damage for this encounter you can run nighthawk you can run assassin's cowl you can run the shards of galanor shout out to plunder the booty he uploaded a nice video on the shards of galanor build i tried it out me personally i don't like dragon's breath for this encounter so the reason why is it's scary using a rocket these ads jump in your face the ogre can jump in your face so i kind of wanted to just show you xenophage yes you're gonna do less damage you're probably gonna four phase but still it's safe here's the artifact mods that i was running and the mod Mods. the mods are all about keeping you alive and getting your abilities back when you're in this encounter i i hug the left side i tried the right the reason why i don't like sitting on the right is because i feel like the ogre can shoot me more on this left side i sit here i'm going to kill the minotaurs right away because they're down there and they're very annoying and then i'm going to shoot the eyes to spawn the captains when the captains come out i get them weak wait for them to do their animation spawn the first pull and then i kill them with my sniper in the second pull i'll go to the flame cleanse my chill and then go jump in both pulls and get both orbs to spawn when those orbs spawn you can go slam them out of the two out of the four lamps whatever you like and then rinse and repeat when you have orbs three and four ready this is where i start farming heavy i put heavy bricks on the ground try and get them down there from the taken next to the boss so i can keep picking up bricks it's very important that if you're running nighthawk in this encounter that you do run dual kinetic surges on your boots now you will have to swap off those to solar weapon surge so that's why i chose to use the shards of galanor in this run because i knew i never had to swap sometimes swapping will get you killed when you start damage make sure that you are throwing your powerful melee to proc this artifact mod it weakens the target and then if you shoot them with chill clip you will proc this mod from the artifact to do 
more damage against bosses that's affected by stasis. So you'll throw your knife, your Riptide, and then throw your Shards of Galanor. The reason why Shards gives you back your Blade Barrage so quick is because it's based off the damage. That's why using stuff like Dragon's Breath, the Scorches, bring your super back. But again, high risk, high reward. It's a rocket. You're going for a solo flawless. I just simply used Xenophage. Again, Xenophage is solar. So if I throw a healing nade down or a powerful melee and I pick up a fire sprite, I can always shoot one add with the Xenophage or my hand cannon to extend restoration. You can also use Leviathan's Breath to stun this ogre. Instead of going in a square, the ogre gets to you kind of quickly. You can always go cross pattern. That way the ogre has a longer distance to get to you. This is kind of up to you. Going through each lamp, make sure that you have a dodge a melee really don't use that healing grenade unless you need it i tried keeping restoration proc the best i could in between damaging the, the ogre because i didn't want to use that healing grenade unless i really needed it rinse and repeat until you get a good damage phase practice it going into the second damage phase when i have the orbs three and four at the pit i do not slam them i make sure that i put on scavenger on my boots to make sure that i can pick up ammo bricks i never go into a damage phase without full heavy and also some heavy bricks on the ground just to be safe i think this safe strat could work but again you don't have to use it if you're running uh titan you know obviously you're probably run strand or you're gonna run hammers and then on a warlock you'd have your well but again this is just totally up to you but i just wanted to show you a safe way to do this encounter and really take your time before slamming the balls at the flames make sure that all the scorn are dead so you're not getting sniped restoration is huge here after beating the ogre i switched to strand immediately i put on a sniper for long range sunshot to clear ads and sword for movement and I do have the double grapple on my hunter. The reason why is if you fall off the map, you got a safe way to get you to the next encounter to grapple. When you get to the ball sphere room, the taken orb room, make sure you take your time, kill these ads on the bridge, use your grapple, play it smart. When you get to the next section and all those taken start spawning, you can hide on this cliff, really wait for them all to spawn. Take your time, do not run past them. I actually ran past them in a solo practice run on my Titan and I did get caught slipping and snipe. Now, uh, when I get up to the top right before the boss i make sure that i take out all the ads with sunshot pop my super clear them up take your time boss room is definitely a different kind of way of playing i don't like loadout swapping because i feel like it puts too much pressure on people but i did this first try i died on my titan at the boss room switched to hunter did a boss practice run i did the boss first try and then i actually did my solo flawless run on my hunter for the first run and i got a first try this kind of strat and build use for this boss is pretty simple your golden gun is going to do all the boss's health gate so if you right when you start the fight when the golden gun hits the boss is going to move to the next level now this is depending off your power so if you do have to shoot him with a few heavy linear shots or whatever heavy you're using it should be an easy dps phase so before we get into the boss fight i just want to show you the build this is the ad clearing build the assassin's cowl solar hunter build the reason why we're using these artifacts and these fragments i'll hover over every single one now so you can see these are two proc restoration and keep you alive same fragments that we used before but i just wanted to show you again heading into the fight what i like to do is i start the encounter clear all the ads always have my restoration proc when i shoot the eyes i try and pick up a fire sprite have restoration proc shoot the eyes spawn the enemy when i spawn those captains i have my healing aid and dodge ready just in case for any panic as soon as the captain spawns the first blight i'll kill him and then i'll throw my knives at a taken and i will go invis leading up to standing in the pools you are invis if there's ads around you throw your knives reproc assassin's cow when your counter starts getting low and you gotta melee the guy that is what your knives are gonna be for the distance melee as you're walking out of the pools and you've activated please throw your knives at him and run do not melee him and then turn around he has a chance to punch you back as soon as you hit that melee i want you to find a safe place to hide and swap to your nighthawk build this nighthawk build will have two kinetic surges on your boots three doesn't work the reason why i didn't swap my boots after the nighthawk shot is because we don't have a lot of time so leading up to damage as soon as the boss activates i have my healing grenade ready i activate restoration i shoot a couple shots to kill those thrall that he spawns i will throw my knives at the boss and then hit that nighthawk the reason why i didn't use riptide for this boss to debuff him even more 
more. I like having my kinetic sniper on. It just felt good. It felt snappy. It did decent damage. You don't have to use the deep stone crypt sniper. You can use a last wish rapid fire sniper. You can use whatever you want. It's just, I'm, I'm a big fan of the reconstruction Vorpal. So after I hit my golden gun shot, it hits for 99999 because I'm 1823. And I always pop my golden gun with my heavy out. If my heavy appears after the golden gun shot goes off, I can at least shoot the boss a couple times to push him even further in DPS. After DPS, you'll switch back to your cow loadout, go to the next floor, rinse and repeat. Please take your time. I never went into damage, never without full heavy. And what's nice is with this build, you really don't need to farm that much heavy because you're not using it much. As you see, second floor damage. Here we go. We're getting ready. We kill the ads. Pop the Nighthawk, shoot him a couple times, go back. The third floor damage, here we go, getting ready for the third. Throw the knives, pop the Goldie, done. Gather some ammo and get ready to jump up top. What I like to do when I'm standing up top is I'm exposed, the boss can shoot me, the eyes can shoot me. Shoot the boss a few times with your linear and then look to the left. Kill the eyeballs with the sunshot or your hand cannon, whatever you're using, and then switch back to your heavy. If you're standing at the pillar, the right eyes can't shoot you. And every time those left eyes spawn, you can shoot them. The reason why I didn't panic and use my healing grenade right off the rip is because I didn't want to waste it. Now you can throw your knives at the boss to debuff them, but again, it's risky. You should just really take your time here and get the easy kill. I almost two phased the boss, did two full DPS phases and kill him, but I played it safe for the third we're going to show you the final clip here of getting ready to get set up for final stand but you see i take my time saving my golden gun for final stand when i get teleported up i'm simply going to take out some eyes hit that golden gun almost dead this final stand phase lasts forever you can never wipe here please take your time the reason why i use sunshot here is because the sunshot explosions are killing multiple eyes. I'm taking my time and I only shoot the boss when I feel it's safe. Again, I know some of you might not like the loadout swap, but this Assassin's Cow Nighthawk swap makes this solo flawless pretty simple. You're hiding from the boss a lot. I'll probably do some guides on the other classes as well, but I wanted to get this out and help you guys through. Just remember, don't claim the emblem because it is bugged. So I got my triumph sitting there until Bungie addresses it. I'll have all the dim links down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this new solo flawless guide. Kind of like a new style with me on cam and showing you what I was doing. And I'll see you guys next time.